Well, welcome back to another edition of 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse Halloween Extravaganza. And uh, how about a double dose of Bell Lugosi? Oh, man. Remember, I guess it was 1940 they released this? Of course, we weren't around, most of us anyway. The Devil Bat, which became a perennial late-night favorite. I don't know if it even ran on Schiller Theater. It was one of the only films Lugosi did for... PRC, Producers Releasing Corporation. But anyway, Lugosi is kindly Dr. Carruthers, who not only is a medical doctor and beloved by the townsfolk, but makes fragrances in his spare time. And one of the fragrances I guess he made, he had given to this company run by this local family, which made them rich. But Professor Carruthers settled for a $10,000 payoff and now has been brooding, and while he's been brooding, he's been growing these giant bats. And he got the bats sort of pissed off with a certain scent that they pick up, a little, I don't know, bat moan or something like that. But anyway, he's invited to a shindig, which he doesn't show up at, so the family sends one of the sons over to present him with a $5,000 bonus check. Which he takes and then tells the young man to splash on some of this new experimental aftershave. Make sure you get it over here. So, he broods as he walks back to the laboratory about the $5,000 pittance he just got. Hey, in 1940, I don't think 5000 bucks was a pittance, but hey, that's me. So anyway, he lets loose the giant bat, which basically the scent drives him to this kid and rips his throat out and leaves him dead. This, of course, attracts the local news media and a reporter and a photographer sent out. And another son goes to see Dr. Carruthers and is given the same aftershave treatment. And also, when he wishes the good doctor good night, Tom wishes good, good doctor a good night, Dr. Carruthers, he says goodbye, Tom. And he does that a lot. So... All right, so Tom's going down, and he runs into the reporter and his sister, who are schmoozing, and basically blows off the whole idea of a killer bat until the thing swoops down and kills him, and they witness it this time. But the reporters and their photographer are going to get called back, and they don't want to get called back, so they make up a fake bat, they get caught, they get fired. In the meantime... The real bat attacks somebody else, and while it's killing them, the reporter pumps a bunch of slugs into it, killing the bat. So in the, in the news, they say that the bat was one of a kind is an extinct, and uh, Professor Carruthers is listening to the radio report with this guy saying that it's a giant extinct bat. He goes, imbecile, bombastic ignoramus, which is my favorite fucking line in the movie. I just want to call somebody a bombastic ignoramus. But anyway, he grows another one. What the fuck? You got a whole shitload of bats. May as well grow another one. And this time he targets the father and goes over and tells him to try the aftershave. And they all say they don't put it on until morning, but somehow Professor Carruthers, the kindly little bastard that he is, hey, put it over here, you know, a little bit more. And then, of course, the bat strikes again. Now the only one left, I think, is the uh, sister. So as the comeuppance, Bell, uh, Professor Carruthers is splashed with his own fragrance and killed by his own creation, and the own creation is killed by the cops. The end. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a fun fucking movie. And of course, you know, Lugosi's playing it completely over the top, um, which is his forte. But normal over the top, then monograms, the corpse vanishes, where Bella is back as Dr. Lazar or something like that. And it seems that brides are dropping dead at the altar. And even worse than that, their bodies are being snatched. So we go through one bride who's going to go, and that'll never happen to me and her, you know, fiancé. And she gets delivered a, an orchid, which she believes is from her fiancé. And when she puts it on, about 15 minutes later, she kills over dead at the altar. Well, then her body is snatched by some people. The cops catch one of them, and says they were paid off, whatever, and it's... Uh, Professor Lorenzo and his uh, imbecilic son, who's also a little bit perverted, and the other son, Toby, a dwarf, played by none other than one of the greatest uh, small people actors of all times, Angelo Rosito. So what happens is they're stealing the bodies, which aren't dead, they're catatonic, and they're draining spinal fluid. And it's it just, you know something, I just got a feeling that if we had a lot more extra spinal fluid, the world would be a better fucking place. But no, so anyway... 
He's got all these brides lined up, and he whips the one son who is, uh, I guess, attempting to slip one of the brides the old tube steak. So, you know, things happen, and the law gets involved. Finally, they're tracked down. Poor little Toby gets shot and is left for dead by his dad. And then finally, the law closes in, and the brides are revived. So all ends well. Um, these two films were actually... The early VHS sell-through titles, I think it, w it was Good Times that put them out. Um, them, I think they had Killers from Space, Night of the Living Dead, a bunch of other ones. But these were the ones you could all actually only buy, you know, in, in like Walmart and places like that. I think, where did I buy them on? Crazy Eddie? Remember Crazy Eddie? But anyway, now they're available, uh, I think, Devil Bats on uh, Blu-ray and uh, the Corpse uh, Vanishes. I don't know, it's out there somewhere, but... Um, that's our show for today. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch you on the flip side with some more Monster Mania tomorrow.